Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. And now let's look through the uh, newspapers this morning and see what major stories we can find. We'll say good morning to Mr. Ezekiel Nyayetok, who's going to be, of course, analyzing the stories with us. Thanks good for morning. joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Good morning to you. Let's start with the Punch newspapers. Um, I'm sure the big one there that uh, makes the headlines will be on Namdi Kanu. Uh, and it's going to be on your screen in just a few seconds. Uh, yes, you have it there. It says, uh, we are seeking explanation from the federal government on Kanu's arrest, says Britain. Um, UK ready to provide consular assistance to Kanu demands due process. Biafran agitators, lawyers, rights DSS, alleged IPOB leader was kidnapped. And Kenyan authorities handed over Kanu to Nigeria, alleges IPOB. House of Reps may consider PIB reports today. And also eight journalists killed and 300 violations recorded under Buhari, says a report. Land borders reopening uh, motion divides reps. Also on the point this morning, seconders, others storm Senate over Onochia, uh, threaten sacking defecting legislators. And uh, also this morning on the Poncha uh, newspapers, we have, why we have not taken Super TV CEO's suspected killer to court. Grieving mother Knox FCT school alleges 14-year-old daughter died after defilement. Three policemen allegedly injured in Gandujay's convoy uh, attack in Zamfara. Uh, I think we can also see here uh, lawyers uh, kick as monarch uh, detained over Oshun mosque attack. Um, I think that's all we can share on the punching surface this morning. On the nation, security probes Kanu to uncover IPOB financiers. Kanu's call logs, social media accounts being screened. UK may initiate talks with government. Igbo leaders call for fair hearing. He may be charged with inciting killings. Bandits kill lawmaker, attack Gandhiji's convoy. ACF, not governors, not tackling unemployment. Buhari settles 100 billion Naira retirees' pensions liabilities. Zenit Bank retains number one tier one bank top sport. Tinubu welcomes Matawali to APC. Buhari Oshimbajo Hill, Sunji Bello at 60. Economy at half year. Investors lose 1.2 trillion Naira. Naira depreciates by 8%. Inflation increases by 13.8%. Also on the Nation newspaper, APC senators now 70, PDP 38 after defections. 71-year-old is Unilag's best PhD graduate. 71-year-old is Unilag's best PhD graduate. Um, those are the stories on the Nation. And now on the Nigerian Tribune, on Namdi Kanu once again, UK, IPOB and brother provide more insights into his arrest and trial. Four senators dump PDP, join APC. Bandits attack Ganduje's convoy, injure three policemen. Nigeria's problem is Nigerians, not ethnicity, religion, says President Buhari. Oyetola inaugurates 42,000 hunters to tackle insecurity in Oshun State. And also bandits kill Zamfara lawmaker, kidnap son and driver. Court remands two headsmen for allegedly kidnapping Ikiti traditional ruler. On our chair, PDP leaders protest at National Assembly, want Senate to reject her nomination. Boko Haram, ISWAP terrorist group, recruiting via social media, says NSA. And um, I think that we're going to stop there on the Nigerian Tribune. Yes, I think those are the stories we can uh, look at this morning. Um, there are others on the Guardian newspaper, but they simply um, repeat what we've seen on other papers. Ms. Anya Tooks, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me, as always. So one of the biggest stories I've seen since yesterday is about Namdi Kanu. So the controversy about where he was arrested and how was it done. Okay, so the government did not disclose those details, but a news website called First News um, alleged that Namdi Kanu had been um, arrested from um, an airport in Kenya, and the IPOB here is saying this is basically kidnapping and not extradition, like the government is, says, is saying. Where do you come in regarding this, um, especially uh, talks about going through his social media and probing his accounts? Okay. 
Um, first, I think that we must be careful to look at what the issues really should be, what the substances should be. The first is that there is somebody that jumped bail and then um, was accused of a major incident, uh, inciting people and things like that. And um, there was need to bring him back to justice. That is one aspect of it. The second is the, the story behind the person. It's not somebody who stole somebody's goat or somebody who robbed somewhere and was, um, you know, detained. It's somebody who carried out a certain act, an act that has a national import. And except we interrogate that act and isolate that act from the person, we may run the risk of, um, of, of not being able to, to look at this case the way it ought to be. Now, there are one, two, three aspects of Namdi's case that's different. The first is that there is the issue of dual citizenship and how other countries treat their citizens. He happens to be British and Nigerian. And every Nigerian is sitting and watching. They will either say, God, I wish I was British. Or they will say, wow, it's great to be a Nigerian. There are certain international standards. We've become a global village and we must follow those protocols and those standards. The Nigerian law presumes one to be innocent except proven guilty. We happen to run that they, uh, as opposed to that of maybe the French, okay? So taking each of those dynamics, number one, there was a young man that jumped bail. If the country can get him back to answer for his, um, uh, his um, uh, action, there's nothing wrong with it. Number two, international dimensions. How do you do that without, you know, violating his rights? We have those international conventions that we subscribe to. For instance, assuming that he was in a certain country, is it that this country was not willing to cooperate with you so that he can be extradited, you know, formally and following the protocols or the conventions? Or is it that it was done, it's just that it has not yet been revealed as a result, we are jumping the gun by making a lot of assumptions. Some people said he was um, uh, brought in from Dubai, others from Ethiopia, others from Kenya. There's a lot of speculation and I'm asking myself, is this really necessary? Why don't we run countries professionally? If this guy has been brought back, what is such a big secret about how he was brought back? The police addresses this man has been brought back, he was brought back from here, this is what we did. I thought that just kills the story. Unless the government just wants a distraction for people to be distracted from the events of the day concerning governance of the state or the country, so that we can just keep running our commentaries from all sides. And then finally, the spirit of the courts. For me, that's the most important thing. Any young person that can have a followership of up to 5 million youth, predominantly from a certain section, deserves a very high level interrogation and deciphering the cases, criminality and justice. And the question we must answer, we will answer ultimately, is exactly what is Biafra? Exactly what is Biafra. Because if a young man, smart, but probably half smart, spots an opportunity, jumps on that opportunity, and then because he has an ill intention, you, you, you negate the opportunity and fight the person, 
you may inadvertently end up creating more problems for the nation. Why do we have up to 5 million predominantly young people of Igbo extraction looking up to this man? Just today, I was watching a program on a guy that was into crime, big time crime. And he made a statement that just got me thinking about how we need to look at our young. He said, he said I needed love, I needed acceptance. And the only place I could find was the crime family. The crime, they, they took me, they accepted me, they helped me. Now you could say, how could you go to crime family and yet you forget what led you there? Mr. Yetok. How can we come back, yes? Yeah, yeah, the British High Commission is saying that they're going to get involved. They will initiate talks to the government. And, of course, are ready to provide consular assistance to Namdi Kanu. How do you think this might affect the outcome of the case, seeing that Namdi Kanu is also a citizen of the I, UK? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to say I don't care how it affects. The bigger question is, what is the average Nigerian youth thinking if the British government says that is one of our citizens and we need justice for him, if he's done the crime, he's got to do the time. But please establish that he's done the crime. Be just, be fair. We are going to give him every possible support to ensure that justice is served. How does that sound in the ears of a young Nigerian our future, the youth. Don't we have a country that should have come up first and say, this is our son. We're going to give him the most fair of trials. We're going to make sure that he, so that you, you even preempt the British. But we're going to be very firm. And when there is any crime or any charges against him, he's going to do the time. But as a Nigerian, we're going to make sure we give him all the protection and give him the justice that he deserves. If he's wrong, he's going to pay for it. If he's not guilty, he's going to go free. That statement should have come from the Nigerian government before the British government. Because now the British government, they've come to take the shine of Nigerians. We are now looking at Nigerians on wanting to bully, intimidate, harass, you know, this young person. And we're like, in as much as even, 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 there's a young girl that is being told that she killed somebody. Okay? The person is dead. We all know he's dead. Do you understand me? But that young girl or lady has a right to fair hearing. Because maybe somewhere along the line, you may discover that she had a mental problem. You isolate that. Or somewhere along the line, you could discover one thing or the other, but you give a fair hearing in a clear case of murder, and there's nothing to dispute about it. In the same manner, let us first give Nigerians that impression, that animation, that the citizen is my child, and I'm going to give them fair hearing. That animation is lost and is unfortunate. Government must learn to be cerebral and must learn what governance is all about. I'm really bothered that we really don't know what governance is all about. All right, and I want to call on all professionals to wake up and get involved and let us rescue this country. We're not running governance. We're not. We're not. Right. Uh, Ms. Ayatok, let's uh, move away from Nam Nikano now to uh, some other thing that made the headlines this morning, and that is the PDP leaders uh, protesting against uh, Loretta Onoche's nomination. Uh, they were gathered yesterday, uh, Senator Barry Bay, uh, Uche Sekundus, and a couple of other people uh, to protest her nomination. And, of course, is demanding that the government drops her uh, as a nominee for INA commissioner. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, the very first thing I would like to say is, did it really need to come to this? You know, we, we run this APC government... The PDP was not even much different. That's why I'm not really, they are like um, six and a half dozen. They are, they, are, they are right. Don't they realize that certain statements are made for you to, 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 before you make a statement, you think of what you want to achieve. Okay? Election, 
I want election to be seen to be free, fair, credible. That is just the starting point. On account of this, I'm going to start with perception. When it comes to the electoral act, I'm going to rush and make sure that it's out and people know what it's all about. I want election to be free, fair, credible. So electoral act, you rush it. You're telling Nigerians 2023 must be free, fair, credible. You've got to know the rules. You've got to rehab the rules. Don't come in here training ignorance on anything. That is one we refused. You go into the second one, funding of INEC. INEC, where's your budget? What do you need? I want you to start on time. Preparation is what you need for success. And blah, blah, blah. It makes so much noise. With each of these animations, people are like, wow, 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 2023 is going to be good. You prepare people's minds before time. And then you come to appointment. You do this. And then people say, this woman, you, you come out. You use a sledgehammer to kill a fly just to make a point. This lady is said to be partisan. We really don't see her as such. We believe she's a fair-minded person. We believe that she's professional. She's this is that was the basis we brought her out integrity. But just to assuage, as it were, the feelings of the public, so that because in a case, a, a, you know, in a, in a, in a case, a, 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 somebody can stand and say, I don't want that judge on my case because. My brother and, and him had a problem, and then he's likely to be biased against me. And they will listen to, and we draw the judge and bring another one. Because justice must not only be served, it must be seen. That perception. Perception is reality, you know? And then we didn't even need to wait for BDP to now go on a protest. It was not necessary. APC government lacks, I've said this time and time again, they lack strategy, they lack tact. They lack it. They just don't have it. They don't really seem to know what they want. And maybe they, this is what they want. Maybe I'm the one thinking they should understand what governance is. Maybe that's not really what they are in there for. So long as they can be in power, and what it takes to be in power, that's what they want. If they need to bring in criminals, they need to bring all sorts of people, they need to bring in characters that have questions, just that they can serve their purpose, they are willing to do it. Maybe that is their mindset. But I would like to think better of them. That they will know that they took an oath to defend the integrity of this country. To be fair, to be just, to be equitable to all. And within that context, I want to appeal to them. They don't need to. There are many capable ladies in every, in every state, in every state of this federation, in every senatorial district. We have competent, capable ladies. If they want me to help them, just tell me which zone you want, and I'll give you a list of 10 very qualified, competent people for you to choose from, that are even people that are neutral. So please let's drop that lady. Okay. Not, not PDP only. Even IPAC said it. I was a former national chairman of a party, and when IPAC speaks on election and fairness, you listen to the them. Okay, Mr. Okay, Yedjok. Just say, these are like irritants, please. Ms. Yetok, let's move over to security now. On the Nigerian Tribune, there are three stories that cut yeah. across that sector. Um, the biggest one is about the bandits attacking Gandhiji's convoy and injuring three policemen. But uh, the commissioner said the governor was not in that convoy. Uh, the, also the story about bandits killing a lawmaker in Zamfara, kidnapping the son and the driver. And lastly, courts remanding two herdsmen for allegedly kidnapping a kitty traditional ruler. Um, do you see a, th a trend, a thread? Um, across these three stories? <laughs> the trend and the thread is across all the stories, insecurity. And um, I don't know where we start to talk about insecurity in this country, but I, I pray that, that we all come to a point of saying that, that human lives matter. Look at Britain. Britain is willing to go out of their way and do everything because of one individual who is not really, really, really British, so to speak. Nandi is seen more as a Nigerian than a British, but for the simple reason, he's not even a white man, he's a black guy. Just for the simple reason that he has a, a, a British passport. The British is going out of their way to make sure that they tell you that every 
wherein life matters. What is the animation, I keep using that word today, of our Nigerian government to our lives? If the governor is not safe, who is safe? If the governor's convoy can, do we really think of the mind games? What this tells us? You see, this, this, these terrorists are not as, as, as you know, um, what they call it, as, as non-structured or non-strategic than our, like our governments are. They, 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 they make a point. And that point is not what you see, but what they want you to perceive at the back of your mind, of your mind. They thrive in that fear. So they hit big targets. How is government reversing the trends? Government is giving us explanation. We are doing our best. We are trying. We are doing this. As they are doing that, these guys are hitting hard targets, not even soft targets again. again. And when they go to soft targets, they want to make a point. They of taking two, three students, they want to carry 200. I mean, it's mind ugly. When they can carry 200 students and nobody talks, and then come to government and hit and nobody talks, I pray that, you know, they have already done the, the, the police headquarters once. I pray that they don't hit Villa because that will be, this is some, still somewhere that we believe in in our minds that they cannot go there. When they hit a government house or Villa, we would have come to a point where we believe that it's hopeless. And hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. Right. Where will investors come? Why will they come into this country? The government should stop right today to talk about investors because it means they are not thinking. They should come and concentrate 100% on, on security. The moment this country is secure, we have all the indices to attract any investment that we want. But for as long as we treat the insecurity as inconsequential, no sane person will come to invest in your country. So right. I think there should be a law. All governors and the president should stop say anything about foreign direct investment. They should stop because they are taking us for granted. They are taking for Don't we know? I know. I do know that no man will come into our country to invest in a place of insecurity. But at the moment we are secure, they will rush us. No one that saying hashtag the days of Twitter, but then they rush us. Do you understand me? Nigeria has everything to be the most beautiful bride in the, in the world. Mm. But nobody will come unless you are secure. So let Mr. President sit on. All right. Um, let him sit up. Let him wake up Mr. and then give us security. All Chapter right. two, section fourteen, subsection two, two B of our constitution says the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. All right. Finally, I think uh, um, you can quickly just squeeze in your thoughts on the defections. You made uh, statements earlier saying the PDP and the APC are pretty much the same thing. Uh, but there still are defections. The PDP currently has uh, reduced to 38, I believe, uh, senators. Um, and um, Zamfara State, of course, um, the, the reason you know, for the traveling to Zamfara State in the first place was because of the defection of Governor Matawale. So quickly also share your thoughts on what's going on with the opposition party and uh, you know, the fact yeah. that there's more you know, there people two, defecting. Yeah. There are two things. First is that I was talking to a very high-ranking person in the PDP, extremely high. And he smiled and said, yeah, this is politics. Okay? What we want to do is move people to APC. Move some of these defections are strategic. So that just before election, they will all come home. Do you understand me? So that there's going to be this trend where just before election, there's mass movement from it because APC has a problem. Forget about what's going on now. They can use the security to intimidate people. Guy, three months to election, he can afford to lose anything. He can afford to, to hide. He can afford to do anything. But now, if they say come and you don't come, they can hit you. You still have over a year. They can deal with you. So go. Do you understand? They say you carry a child's, a person's child when he's asleep. When he wakes up, he will go back to the parents. So they are saying, let APC have their way that when the time comes, they will know where each person belongs. But that's not what my own. All those, are not the political. All those things don't, don't affect the price of Gary in the market. For the poor man, we are asking, where is the third force that will push these people away and give us what governance is? That's what Nigerians want. They are playing politics. And politics has made us with the poorest, the poor, poverty capital of the world. 
What we need is governance. And that's what God wants me to talk and talk and talk. Good governance. Please, right. every right thinking person should come. And to Plus TV Africa, thanks again for this privilege and opportunity. Yes, and lastly from me, um, a story here about education. Afe oh. Babalola okay. writes on creation of tertiary institutions. We've been having talks about this, you know, advocacy for the creation of new um, institutions in Nigeria. But do you think that really should be the focus when we've been talking about, you know, kids being kidnapped from school? Or do you think that's, that's a, a great uh, direction to move to? Anything that brings focus to us talking about education is welcome by me. Anything that brings education to focus, where we start to have conversation, any of these things will make us to have conversations. And we need to have conversations on education. Any policy, any strategy, any attack that anybody can conceive, please bring it to the table so that we can discuss. By that process, we bring education to the front burner. We've talked about insecurity for so long. Let's start to talk about healthcare. Let's start to talk about housing. Let's start to talk about education. These are the pillars, the fundamentals that drive a healthy society. Education is key. So for me, we can discuss it. We can interrogate it. I would rather discuss that you know, the policy than discuss the fiction of uh, people who are doing what they know what to do against our common interest, in my opinion. All right. Ezekiel, yeah, I talk. Thank you very much for your time this uh, Thursday morning. Welcome to July, and uh, we wish you a beautiful month ahead. Uh, uh, welcome to the better half of the year. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Good morning. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll let you know what happened on this day in history. Uh, I'm going back to the year 2007.